Now, conditional probability will let us explain a lot of the confused arguments that people brought up about Monty Hall. And we'll see that it is a little bit confusing. Uh, and where there are some correct sounding arguments that give you the wrong answer. So let's go back and look at our uh, Monty Hall tree that allowed us to derive the sample space and probability space for the whole process of the, the prize being placed and the contestant picking a door and Carol opening a door. Now this tree was way more complicated than we needed if all we were trying to do was figure out the probability of winning if you switch, but having the tree will allow us to discuss a whole bunch of other events and their probabilities that will get us a grip on some of the arguments that gave the wrong answer. So let's look at the event, first of all, that the goat is at two. Now this is the branch where the prize is at two, and so in all the other branches, the goat is at two. Um, Uh, which means that we have these eight of the 12 outcomes in the event goat is at two. Now let's also look at the event that the prize is at one. That's just this branch of the tree, okay? So one of the arguments is that when the contestant is at the point where uh, they've seen that the open door and they're trying to decide whether to stick it sw or switch, um, they know that the goat is at door two, say without loss of generality, that that was the door that they got to look at behind with that Carol opened. And so uh, we want to ask the probability, uh, given that he picked uh, one, what's the probability that the prize is at one given that the goat is at two? That means that if you're at uh, door one, then you should uh, stick if that probability is uh, high and otherwise you shouldn't stick. So we can look at this event, the prize at one given the goat at two, and what we can see is that it's taking up exactly half of the outcomes for goat at two and the same kind of outcomes, red ones and, and green ones. The red ones are the worth an 18th and the green ones are worth a ninth in probability. And that implies that the probability that the prize is at one given that the goat is at two is a half, it really is. Uh, and that's the argument that people were saying. They said, look, when the contestant sees that the goat is at door two, um, uh, and they're trying to decide whether the goat, the prize is at the door, at, is at door one or at the other door, and it's equally likely, and so it doesn't matter whether they stick or switch. That's a correct argument, but it's not calculating the probability uh, of the stick strategy winning. Why? Well because uh, there's more information that's available than GOAT is at two. Uh, the contestant not only knows that the GOAT is at two in trying to figure out the probability that the prize is at one, but the contestant knows what door he picked. So let's suppose that the contestant did pick door one and learned that the GOAT was at door two. That's a different event. If the, the blue one is marked off at other places where the contestant picks one, um, this is where the door is picked is one, and here's one, and here's one. Um, uh, this one splits into one event, this one splits into one event, but this choice of one splits into two outcomes. Um, and so uh, when we look at the event that both the goat is at two and the contestant picked one, which is what the contestant really knows when they get to see that there's a goat at door two, we wind up with uh, the overlap of just three outcomes two outcomes that have probability one-eighth, and one outcome that has probability a ninth. It's just those three. And the result is that the probability that the prize is at one, given that you picked one and the goat is at two, yeah? So this is uh, the event goat at two and picked one, these three outcomes. The prize is at one is these two outcomes, which are each, each each worth an 18th, and this is an outcome that's worth a ninth. So the prize at one outcomes amount to half of the total probability of this event go to two picked at one. So again, the probability that the prize is at one, given that the contestant picked one and saw the goat at two, is a half also. That's confusing. So it seems as though the contestant may as well stick because 
at the point that he uh, has to decide whether to stick or switch, and he knows where the, and he sees where the goat is, and he knows what door he's picked. Um, it's 50-50 whether he should stick or switch. The probability that the prize is at door one that he picked is a half, uh, so it really doesn't matter if he stays there or if he decides to switch to the unopened door. But wait a minute, that's not right because the contestant not only knows what door he picked, not only knows uh, that there's a goat behind a given door that Carol has opened, but he knows that Carol has opened that door. That's how he got to know that the goat was there. So let's go back and look at the tree. What basically the previous two arguments are conditioning on the wrong events. It's a typical mistake and one that you really have to watch out for. So if you use the correct event, what we're looking at is the contestant knows that they've picked door one. That's the, uh, and the outcomes of pick door one are marked here. In addition, uh, the contestant will get to know, for example, in a play of the game, that Carol has opened door two. Carol opening door two is quite a different event from the goat being at two. And this is a picture of the outcomes in Carol opening door two. And we're interested in the intersection of them. That is just this guy that's in both and this guy that's in both. Uh, there they are. Uh, and so what we can do is identify that the event that you picked one and that Carol opened door two consists simply of two outcomes, one worth an eighteenth and one worth a ninth. Now of these two outcomes, which one has the prize at one? Well, only that one. Remember, the first component here is where the prize is. And so uh, the prize at one event um, among the given picked one and open to is just this red outcome. Now the red outcome has uh, probability 1 18th and the green outcome has probability that's twice as much. So that means that relative to this event, the probability that the prize is at 1 given that you picked 1 and open 2 is actually 1 18th over 1 18th plus 1 9th or 1 third. So given that you picked one and you get to see what Carol did, the probability that the prize is at the door you picked is only one third, which means that if you stick, you only have a one third chance of winning. You should switch. Uh, and if you do, you'll have a two thirds probability of winning. So when we finally condition on everything that we know, which is the contestant knows what door he picked and what door Carol opened, then we discover that it correctly, as we deduced previously, that the probability of switching wins is two-thirds. So we're not trying to rederive the fact that the probability of switching wins is two-thirds. We're trying to illustrate a very basic blunder that you have to watch out for, which is when you're trying to reason about some situation and you condition on some event that you think summarizes what's going on, if you don't get the conditioning event right, you're going to get the wrong answer. So it's easy to see how many people got confused. Uh, and in fact, finding the right event can be tricky. When in doubt, the, the four-step method with constructing the tree, where you're not even thinking about prob uh, conditional probabilities, but you're just examining the individual outcomes, is a good fallback to avoid these kinds of confusing situations.